According to MLI senior fellow J. Michael Cole, writing in the Toronto Star, a recent controversy within the Montreal-based International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, has once again raised questions about the wisdom of excluding Taiwan from such specialized UN agencies. A US-based academic reached out to ICAO on its social media asking whether they would share time-sensitive information with Taiwan about China's rapidly unfolding coronavirus public health emergency. Taiwan, a country of over 23 million people, serves as an important transport hub in Asia. ICAO's response was not to promise access to the information for Taiwan, but to block the Twitter account that asked the question. Other academics and journalists also reached out to ICAO and were similarly rebuffed. According to the ICAO Communications Unit, the individuals in question had engaged in a campaign of disinformation, adding that, quote, inaccurate, compromising, or offensive material, end quote, would henceforth result in blocked accounts. At no point did the original academics refer to Taiwan being allowed to join the UN. The questions were technical in nature and pertained to whether alternative ways could be found for Taiwan to get information. An ICAO communications officer later claimed that, quote, to the best of our understanding, information is all being promptly shared by China with all of the applicable aviation stakeholders and officials in its sovereign territories, end quote. Two main problems with that contention stand out. For one thing, Taiwan isn't a sovereign territory of the People's Republic of China. And, as Taiwanese authorities confirmed, neither ICAO nor the World Health Organization has been sharing information with Taiwan about the coronavirus. Pressure from Beijing is surely the most likely explanation for such dangerous and ill-advised behavior by UN officials. ICAO's contemptuous response resulted in the blocking of several dozen accounts. And ICAO didn't just start digging the hole they found themselves in, they kept digging. Campaigners and advocates were spreading disinformation. ICAO even began claiming it hadn't blocked anyone for asking anything about anywhere. Those who claimed to have been blocked, or asked for the reasons why others had been blocked, were, in their view, contributing to the spread of this misinformation. Overwhelmed, the communications team at ICAO engaged in damage control and sought to cover its tracks. As a result, the organization's responses were self-contradictory, the accusations invidious, and the behavior fell well short of what we should expect from a UN agency. Perhaps ICAO's communications officers aren't fully aware of Beijing's designs on Taiwan, the complex history that surrounds its claims, or China's open efforts to bring the UN and its agencies to heal and make them instruments of Beijing's will. So, to use a rather impolite term, such individuals are useful idiots who likely mean well but soon find themselves dragged into Chinese Communist Party-style censorship. This silly incident is emblematic of the deeper problems at the UN, where we have allowed an increasingly authoritarian regime to hijack international institutions. Dealing effectively today with global public health emergencies like the coronavirus outbreak requires that we deal with the world, including Taiwan, as it is, not as Beijing wishes it to be. I'm Brian Lee Crowley for the Macdonald Laurier Institute.